Hey, everybody, and welcome to Software Defined Everything, the podcast for smart world systems. I'm your host, Steven Onzo, and today I'm joined by Ken Brophy, tools team lead here at RTI. Ken, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Steven. We're here today to talk about a premier tool that's included in the Connects product, and that is Administration Console, or Admin Console as it's known here. Can you give us a brief overview of what the RTI Admin Console is and its primary purpose? Yeah. Um, so the Admin Console is designed to help you visualize what's running in your system and to help you debug um, your distributed system. So. It's primarily a tool for developers, uh, though we do have other uh, people that in, in different roles that want to use it as well. What are some of the core functionalities of Admin Console? I know it does many things, but if you were to kind of sum it up in a few core functionalities, what would those be? Right. Um, system awareness, um, data visualization, administration, and uh, testing. So this is what our customers are primarily using Admin Console for. Yeah, yeah. The testing is pretty new. Um, that's a, a pretty recent addition to the features set. Um, but uh, people have been using it for many years for understanding what's running in their system, to be able to see their data, uh, find problems, uh, you know, debug, uh, visualize. And... Um, and like I say, now they can use it to do some testing as well, because now they can publish data to the DDS bus rather than just get data from it. I'd like to talk a little bit about the features and benefits in Admin Console. There was recently a big update. Can you talk about what some of the new features are and the user benefits one can expect when updating their version of Connect to the most recent version? Sure. Um, graphical data publishing is our newest and one of our biggest features ever, I think. Um, what it allows you to do is not only to visualize the data that is flowing through your distributed system, but it allows you to actually publish your own data. So you can, for example, uh, publish in some values that maybe don't show up in your normal system to try to induce some errors. Or you could publish data that um, is somehow stressful to your system and, and see the results of what happens. Um, so this is, I think, a, a pretty powerful feature. Uh, developers and testers, I think, are, are, you know, really enjoying it. We've gotten some great feedback about the feature. And, um, and it really kind of expands the use cases that Admin Console uh, helps, helps uh, implement. You mentioned data visualization. I'd like to just dive into that just a little bit more. How does Admin Console help with data visualization directly from the system? Yeah, so you can you can directly subscribe to your topics and and see the data. Um, there's a few different visualizations that we have. There's the instance table. So each row in that table is a different DDS instance. And you can think of an instance like a, um, a relational database primary key. So sensor one, sensor two, sensor three type of thing. So each of those uh, bits of data is separated out for you. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a sample log as well. The sample log just shows you the activity on the topic. So if sensor one published three samples and then sensor two published one and then sensor five published eight of them, you'll see that all in a row. That's also a table. There's also a time chart. So the time chart can take scalar data values like temperatures or uh, velocities or, or whatever it is that you have that's a, you know, a real number, and uh, it can plot them over time. So this is really helpful for seeing the historical value of, um, of the, the field over time. Uh, and by default, we store uh, a million uh, historical data samples for each field that you put into a time chart so that you can scroll back uh, and look at, at those values over the course of time. And of course, you can, you can put fields in from different instances within a topic, different topics within the same domain, or different topics within different domains. So you can, you can really see how things relate to one another um, through all those different mechanisms. Uh, so those are our main visualizations that we have today. You mentioned sample logs and log messages. 
How does Admin Console proactively analyze configuration of the log messages? Can you give an example of a real world example of system configuration and log messages? Yeah, so this is one of the big use cases that um, our developers uh, bring up Admin Console to solve. Um, there are a lot of QoS settings in DDS. Some of them are not compatible with each other. So if you asked for uh, reliable data in your, in your data consumer, your data reader, but your data writer is only willing to provide it best effort, then those two aren't going to talk to each other. And you'll get callbacks um, notifying you saying, hey, you know, you're you know, your writer didn't match your reader, but often people don't instrument those callbacks. And so they don't, you know, they don't notice what's going on. They just know that they're not getting data. So this is one of the big things that, you know, admin console solves for you. So what it does is it, it looks at your whole distributed system and it analyzes all of those QoS settings to look for mismatches and it proactively displays them on the screen so that you'll know pretty much instantaneously if there's a problem in your system. The nice thing about this is that it's hierarchical. So if you've got a reader and a writer that aren't matching, the publisher and the subscriber with, you know, that contains those will also go into an error mode, right? They'll have a little badge on their icon saying, hey, I've got a problem. Then the containing participant and then the containing process and the containing host and the containing domain. So if there's a problem anywhere in the system, you'll be able to drill down and know exactly, you know, where to, where to find the actual problem. Um, you also mentioned log messages. So in addition to the, the quality of service analysis, we also look at the log messages. So if you use a component called distributed logger and you um, write your log messages, your application log messages to the network through that component, then when you write uh, warning uh, messages, those will show up in Admin Console. It'll, it'll catch that message, it'll see that there's a warning, and it'll change your status to warning. If there's an error, it'll then upgrade your status, I guess downgrade it, from warning to error. And now you can see, oh, I, I now have problems. And then when you pull up that application, it'll have the um, log messages in there so you can see them. So from this one place, you'll be able to uh, detect uh, DDS problems and you'll be able to detect application problems. Um, and I think that's, you know, uh, that's what brings a lot of value to our customers. I think that's one of the big things that they use Admin Console for in addition to visualizing their data and now um, injecting data into their system for, for testing. Earlier when we talked about core functionalities of Admin Console, one of the things you mentioned was troubleshooting what specific aspects of Connect Infrastructure services can be monitored and troubleshooted using Admin Console? Yeah, you, you can pretty much um, troubleshoot all of them if there's quality of service problems or, or log messages. Um, the support is better, though, for you have more visibility into the workings of what's going on in some of the infrastructure services more than others. So. Um, I'd put persistent service kind of low. It, it does all the standard DDS stuff. Um, Admin Console analyzes the endpoints and all that. Um, and then kind of our biggest um, integration is with routing service. So routing service, you can see all the different routes. You can see the throughput through those routes. You can see the latency through them. Um, you can send some commands to it like pause, stop, shut down. So you can interact with that uh, service quite a bit. Um, and then kind of in the middle is recorder and replay uh, where you can do um, some of these same uh, activities, but you can't do everything that uh, you don't have all the options that you do with routing service, for example. This next question is pretty similar to the last question, but could you share some examples of how Admin Console highlights problems and, and makes them easier to find and ultimately address? Yeah, I, I mean, one of the design philosophies that we had with this product was to proactively look for issues rather than reactively try to let people find them and discover them on their own. Um, so, you know, as the, the product is running um, and it discovers new things or things change their QoS at runtime 
Um, it is it is constantly, you know, monitoring that and then reanalyzing the system. So if, for example, you bring up that that data reader that wants to be reliable and your data writer is best effort, it's it's looking at that and it's analyzing and then it's giving you the visual indication in the hierarchical views, the trees, um, that there are problems and that you can drill down and find them. Um, but if you, for example, turn that reader off, then the, the system will, will go back into being in healthy mode and, and those, and those things will all disappear. This is all in real time. So, you know, you can, you know, start something up, see that it, it made your system go into a bad state and then shut it down and see that it goes into a good state. So now you're able to identify those, those problems pretty quickly. Um, and, and like I say, the visual representation, I think is pretty straightforward. There's only three states, um, healthy, which doesn't show anything just as your normal icons warning, which gives you a little, what we call a badge. It's a little circle on the icon that says, Hey, there, there might be, you know, something for you to look at here and then error, which is the same type of badge, but has the red color to it. Um, and we've gotten really good feedback about this, um, you know, this user interface that people have really enjoyed that. And they've, <clears throat> they found it easy to navigate, uh, to, to find the issues in their system. Moving into real world use cases, are there certain types of industries and, or applications that can benefit the most from using admin console? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's a pretty general purpose application. Um, there's not a whole lot of industry specific logic or, um, or user interface that, that we have put into the product. Um, industries that kind of hide what DDS is doing will have, you know, they'll have more to sort through to figure out what's going on, like say a Ross, for example. Um, but if you're using DDS and its functionality is exposed in your design, domains and topics and things like this, um, then you'll find it pretty easy to navigate around and, and see what is running, um, what might have problems, uh, see the actual data flowing around, and then, and then push your own data into the system uh, with the graphical data publishing. So it, it's a pretty general purpose tool. Um, there's not, there's not a, an industry specific uh, extension or anything like that, that you have to, to worry about it. It's pretty general purpose. Can you share a success story where admin console significantly improved the troubleshooting process or accomplished something that the customer was trying to do and couldn't do before? Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, I was just talking with this customer a few weeks ago. Um, they have a system that is very remote from where they're working. Um, and it, it has a lot of different vendors that are contributing to the system. So it's not, you know, just my group and we're just doing this and, and we control all the variables. So they found, you know, a lot of QoS problems, uh, but the bigger one that they really uh, didn't know was happening was that vendors were using different versions of the data types for the various topics. And some of those data types were not compatible with the ones being run by other vendors. And so data wasn't flowing because they're, they're incompatible. They, they don't want to talk to each other. And when they brought up the tool, it, it just, it went and analyzed all that and gave them the, the analysis, the results. And so right away they were like, oh, we've got 33 problems here. And, you know, we just need to go down and, and one by one figure out what's going on. And, and that's what they did. So they, <clears throat> they had a pretty instantaneous um, uh, feedback uh, about all the different, you know, issues that they were facing. Now it, it doesn't solve everything. Uh, it, it doesn't tell you when you're missing samples or samples are being lost or this sort of thing, which is what another one of our products does, the observability uh, product and the, and the monitor UI product. But, um, but Admin Console was able to uh, pretty quickly show them uh, a whole big 
set of things that they needed to fix and they were able to fix that. So, so that was pretty satisfying. So steering into some more technical details compared to other DDS based softwares, is the admin console functionality unique to Connext or what do non Connext users do in the absence of this functionality? Yeah. Um, so other vendors do have more like command line type of tools. So you can, you can get a sense of what's going on or maybe visualize a topic. And I say visualize kind of uh, in quotes here because, you know, you, you'll see the data flying by in a, in a command window. Um, we also have that type of tool called DDS Spy. Um, but to my knowledge, uh, none of the other vendors have something that's like this or, or that provides the functionality that this does. Um, you know, especially like, you know, administration, debugging, visualization, and system awareness, uh, as well as the data, um, testing capability where, where you can, you know, write, write to topic. Some, some vendors I think do have a right to topic again, though, fairly, you know, fairly crude, uh, you have to do through a command line. Um, the graphical data publishing feature that we added recently, uh, is actually a Python um, binding, so you can you can update your data fields in, in in a Python window within Admin Console, and then send that data out out to the network. You can even make it algorithmic, so you can publish it on a periodic basis and and have a you know have a value updating every every time that you publish or have a sine wave or, or whatever it is you want to do through the Python libraries. Um, but yeah, I think I think we're in a pretty unique position with this product. I know integration could be a big factor when you have existing systems and you're looking to incorporate new technologies. How does RTI Admin Console integrate with existing systems and infrastructure? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a standalone tool, but you can um, extract data from it. So if you subscribe to a topic and you want to um, take the the data that it captured from the network and export it to a file, you can do that. If you want to capture the system as it exists in that moment, you can also export that discovery data. And what you could do is you could send that to a buddy. He can open it up in his admin console um, and, and see what you're seeing, right? Uh, you could also send that data into support, RTI support. They can bring it up and they can help figure out what's going on with your system through that mechanism. Um, you can also uh, craft um, the, the data that you publish to the network. That can also be saved to a file. You can send that to your friend. Uh, she can pull it up and say, play it back, you know, quote unquote, play it back, but load it into admin console and push it to the network so she can see the same situation you're seeing. So that's, I think, what people tend to do with integration. Um, you can also copy IDL, you know, if your data types and you, you know, coming from another vendor and you want to generate the IDL and compile it for yourself, you can also do that. So there's various ways you can interact with the data that admin console is capturing and visualizing. And that's typically how people use it to, to do integration work. Let's talk about user experience for a little bit. What feedback have you received from users regarding admin console's user interface and the ease of use? Yeah, um, well, we, we have a survey that we do uh, for, you know, RTI customers. And, um, and we, we score uh, pretty high. In fact, I think our, our rating for likability for, you know, what, what products do you like from RTI? I think we're number one. So that doesn't mean we should not try to improve it, um, but we do have um, really good feedback in that area. Um, there's always things that we can, we can do to improve. I think some people, when you think about a distributed system debugger, because there aren't that many of them out there, people aren't sure what to expect. And one of the bigger things that we have is feedback that I'm not sure how to navigate and, and, you know, kind of get rolling with this. So, um, a few versions ago, we introduced a new uh, graphical representation 
for how to visualize the distributed system. And it, it's available at different levels of granularity. So you can look at your entire system. You can look at a domain. You can look at a topic. You can look at a process. Um, and you can get a sense of what's happening uh, visually now, much more so, I think, than, than, the, than the tree views that, that we traditionally use. Um, I'm especially, you know, happy with the, the process view because what it does is it, it puts your process in the focus, which is the left side for us. And then all the processes that it talks to, regardless of domain or topic or host or, you know, wherever, wherever they're running, all the processes that it talks to are on the right hand side. And so you can, you can just look through that and see, you know, who's talking to who, right? And it, I think it's a really big usability improvement. Um, but we have gotten really good feedback uh, in, in this area. Um, I'd love to, you know, keep improving it. So, you know, I tell customers when I meet them all the time, send me your ideas, send me your, you know, complaints, and we'll do what we can to, to prioritize them and, and, you know, make the product better. So that's always our goal. And um, it's good right now, but it could always be improved. Is there anything aside from that people find challenging and how they address those challenges? I think the biggest um, user um, challenge that we have today uh, that users have using the tool is with setting up their quality of service. We have strived to make it unnecessary. Um, we have, you know, put in defaults that, that, satisfy a, a broad set of use cases, but people always want to try their particular QoS um, and see see what happens. So they use the tool kind of like a um, like a prototyper. They you know say, well what if I subscribed using these parameters and you know what is the tool going to get for data? Maybe it's a content filter or, or you know best effort versus reliable or a partition or something and they want to try it out. And in order to do that, uh, I think users don't quite get that there's uh, an administrative set of, of entities uh, that, we, that we use to communicate with DDS. And then there's the other set where we actually subscribe or publish data uh, to interact with the DDS data bus. So um, for them to set up their QoS and to customize it, I think is our biggest challenge. Um, and there are a lot of QoS settings, so it's not it's not a trivial problem to tackle, and that's why we haven't tackled it thus far. It's um, it's something we want to tackle, and in a future product, uh, we want to make that a whole lot better. Uh, but I think that's the biggest one, the biggest hurdle that users face today with Admin Console. Looking into the future, are there any updates or features in the imminent future? that users can expect from admin console? So we're, we're in the middle of a development process right now to uh, implement a new use case for admin console that it's never done before, which is remote debugging. So what you could do is you could run admin console on your local machine and debug a system which is remote from you or otherwise not easily directly accessible. And we're doing this by extending the components from observability to now provide additional data um, so that admin console can participate and, and be uh, remoted. Um, so we have a customer who is experiencing a lot of pain right now because they're their actual system that they want to debug is very geographically far away. And in order to work with it, they have to remote into another system. And then from there, they have to remote into the actual lab. So they run admin console on the remote system, and then they, you know, screen share that back to their desks. And by the time you do all this, you know, you do a button click, and it can be 5, 10, 15 seconds before you actually see the button click take effect. Um, terrible user experience. So the idea would be 
let's get the data from the remote system and and bring that across and make admin console work with that data kind of like it does today when it's an offline mode where if your buddy saved a, a discovery file and now you import it now you can see everything well it's basically like that except making it real time right so that you can you can debug the remote system you can visualize it and see what's going on um, so that's a big new feature that we're working on and we're interested to see um, who is going to pick it up and what features they might want extended because it won't be able to support all the existing features of admin console because there are a lot of data flows so we're doing uh, the first most important data flows which is you know to get the actual discovery data and then we'll see where people want to take it from there I know you may not know a ton about other similar tools on the market. You spend a lot of your time in admin console and focusing on improving admin console for RTI. But in your opinion, what sets the RTI admin console apart from other similar tools on the market? Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's unusual. Um, I've been doing software for a long time. Um, I taught myself to code when I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> And I am very far away from 12 years old, as your podcast listeners may or may not realize, uh, mid-50s. And, um, and I, I have not really run into many applications like it. I'm not trying to say that it's, it's great or anything or, or that it's unique, but it's just not something that you run into all that much. Um, so I think it's... It's kind of unusual, but, um, you know, there's two features for me that really set it apart from, from other things. Um, one is the real time nature of the, of the product itself. So, you know, as it comes up, it's just, it's discovering and it's, and it's visualizing everything it discovers, uh, from the, you know, DDS data bus right away. So that's very real time. If you change a QoS um, within, you know, essentially milliseconds, maybe a hundred milliseconds or something, it'll be on the screen and it'll be updated. So the real time nature of the user interface is I think unusual. And the other thing is um, the performance of it. So when you subscribe to a topic, uh, we strive to make sure that the application itself is not a bottleneck for performance. Um, so it can, you know, it, it can actually subscribe to a topic that's doing a hundred thousand plus samples per second and it will, and it will keep up. It won't, it won't, um, it won't be bogged down or the UI become unresponsive and things like that. So, that is also, I think, fairly unusual. I mean, you know, humans only can ingest data at a certain rate. And of course, we, we use a lot of techniques to throttle it. You know, nobody wants to see 100,000 things updated on their screen per second. Um, we use a lot of techniques under the hood, though, to keep that performance high. Because as I mentioned, like the time chart, we'll keep a million samples. Well, even at 100,000 samples a second, that's 10 seconds of data that we have buffered. And we don't want to miss a single value, right? So the real-time nature and the, the high performance of the actual implementation itself, uh, for me, I think, are, are two of its biggest uh, assets that set, set it apart from whatever else is out there. One more closing thought. Where can listeners learn more about Admin Console and where can they get started? Yeah, um, I mean, our, our website is a great place to start. Um, you can download, you know, the evaluation version of our product uh, and look around. We do have some YouTube resources to to kind of get you started. And there's a welcome screen. As soon as you bring up the product, there's a welcome screen that kind of walks you through some of the uh, basic features. And then um, and then there's also a video in there that, that can help you get started. Um, there are a lot of features in there. Um, I've done a few webinars over the years that that people can also reference where I do a, a deeper dive uh, on the product itself. So those are also good um, resources for people who who want to get a you know a much more in depth technical um, 
knowledge of the product. Yeah, I'd like to shout out a short video series that was produced in-house recently on Admin Console. It's a four-part series, and I'll link it here in this video. But basically, you can watch one of our developers go through um, almost all of the features and benefits of Admin Console, uh, whether you're an evaluator uh, just evaluating the product or a new user. I think it'll be very beneficial for you if you are just getting into Connects and want to learn more about Admin Console. Yeah, that I, I can't remember the name of the series. Um, I was going to mention that, and I couldn't think of the name. So you, you'll you'll have the link in there, and that'll be that'll be a great one because that's that's really helpful. And with that, we conclude today's episode of Software Defined Everything. Ken, I want to thank you very much for coming onto the podcast. But before we go, as always, I do want to ask one last question, and that's what's one recommendation you have for our listeners? Um, it could be a book, a travel destination, a restaurant in your area. Anything that you think is worth sharing? I've been asking this question to all of our guests lately. Yeah. Um, well, I guess it'll be a travel destination for me. So uh, my wife and I um, take a trip every June. Uh, June 11th is our anniversary. And we go to a little beach called Nisquamica Beach in Rhode Island. And um, I just love it there. It, it's very laid back. And... The beaches are terrific. Um, you know, it, it's not super commercialized. There's just a few little, you know, there's mom and pop stores. You know, you can buy lobster rolls and things like that, but it's not heavily commercialized. And it's just a great, great place to go and be at the beach and just get away from it all. Sounds like a classic East Coast beach town. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, once again, Ken, I want to thank you for uh, coming on, and hopefully you can join the podcast again sometime soon. Uh, I'd love that. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. Thank you.